This lecture discusses causal mechanisms. As we know, causal inference is a central goal of scientific research. But the scientists really care about causal mechanisms, not just about causal effects. Uh, this relates to the external validity. Uh, if you get the causal mechanisms right, you might be able to ex uh, predict how the treatment affects a uh, different population. The policy makers also care about um, causal mechanisms too, because that helps devise better policies. If we know exactly what the mechanisms are, we can come up with alternative policies that actually are closer to such mechanisms. Randomized experiments, however, often only determine whether uh, the treatment causes change in the outcome. And it doesn't really explain how and why such treatment effects might arise. Um, so this leads to the common criticism of experiments and statistics in general. There's this black view of causality. Um, we know, we, we can see, you know, we can estimate whether treatment affects the outcome, but we don't really understand why and how that happens. In contrast, qualitative research may use uh, the idea of process tracing, sort of detailed study of sequence of events, trying to understand this causal mechanism. The question here is that, how can we learn about causal mechanisms from experimental and observational studies using uh, quantitative research? And we're gonna use sort of similar idea of uh, process tracing, but using statistics. The main framework that we're going to use to study causal mechanisms is the idea of direct and indirect effects. So here's a DAG representation. We have a treatment, binary treatment, and the mediator, which is potentially affected by the treatment, and that rise on the causal path from the treatment to the outcome Y. So the outcome, potential outcome is a function of both treatment T as well as the value of the mediator M. So one way to think about causal mechanism is to think of it as this indirect effect. The treatment, of treatment T affects the outcome Y through the mediator M. So the goal might be to decompose the total effect of the treatment on the outcome into direct and indirect effects. And if the mediator M is playing a very important role, we should see the indirect effect, the effect of going from T to M to Y, the red arrows, that should uh, represent the much larger proportion of the total effect compared to the direct effect, um, which is the black arrow. So that's, that's basically the idea of decomposing the total effect into the indirect effect that's through M and the direct effect, which direct effect represents all other me possible mechanisms. The alternative way to think about the causal mechanism is to think about the decomposing the treatment into different components. Oftentimes, a particular policy may be composed of a variety of different aspects. For example, educational program may be um, decomposed into the way the teacher is trained or the particular text script that's being used or but all the particular uh, topics that's being covered in classrooms okay. and when you say why does this why did this educational program work one way to understand the causal mechanism is that you might ask is that the teacher training or is it the textbook or is that the topics that's being covered which one of those, or maybe which combination of those factors is really uh, playing a role. Okay, so that's alternative way of thinking about causal mechanisms. Here we are more interested in not decomposing the treatment itself, but looking at um, the factors that are on the causal path from the treatment to the outcome. So what is this mediator, this uh, post-treatment variable that is playing a major role um, in the treatment effect? So how large is the indirect effect relative to the total effect or relative to the direct effect, which represents all other uh, mechanisms of the treatment? Okay, so that's basically sort of the 
uh, one way to think about causal mechanisms, which, which we're going to focus uh, in this module. The first quantity, causal quantity I'd like to introduce is something called a control direct effects, um, CDE. Okay. So the definition is given there, both at the individual level, so for unit level, uh, unit I, what is the control direct effect? Um, as you can see, you're holding the mediator constant and then looking at the difference of the potential outcomes between when you're treated and when you're in the control group. And you can take expectation to define the average uh, control direct effect as well. Okay, So what is this in, uh, interpretation of this quantity? It's a direct effect of treatment while holding the mediator constant at m. Okay? So that's basically the, uh, the interpretation of control direct effect. And it's basically the causal effect of intervention on t and m, right? Because you're setting the t uh, either to 0 or 1, and you're also setting the mediator to a particular value, fixed value m. Okay, so it's an interventional effect. So it's not really about the, uh, it doesn't really directly quantify causal mechanisms, right? Because it just asks you what would happen if we intervene the treatment and the mediator in a certain way. Right? Holding the mediator fixed at m, particular by m, changing the treatment from 0 to 1. What's the difference in the outcome? However, if the mediator fully explains the causal mechanism, then we might expect the CDE, the control direct effects, will be 0 for all values of m. Right? Because if once we hold, if the mediator explains the, the entire treatment effect, then once we hold the mediator fixed, changing the treatment shouldn't, uh, shouldn't change the outcome. Okay, so it, it's indirectly useful in the sense that if we can show the control direct effect um, is really small for all values of M mediator, then that might suggest that mediator actually explains a lot, of, um, um, a lot about the treatment effect. However, it's not a direct um, quantification of causal mechanism. Uh, what makes it a little bit tricky is this the pot potential existence of interaction effects. So control direct effect may vary as a function of the mediator, the value, the m, that you're going to choose to fix the mediator to. When that happens, you would have to compute the control direct effects for every possible value of m, and that makes it difficult to really rule out um, certain type, uh, you know, to examine whether or not um, the mediator really plays a key role. But you can see that um, this could be a useful, useful way of, um, you know, thinking about whether the mediator actually captures uh, the treatment effect, the causal mechanism of the treatment effect. Now, the alternative quantity, uh, which is called natural indirect effects, is actually directly target uh, this causal mechanism idea, causal mechanism. Okay. This is also called the causal mediation effects. And the definition is given there. So here you see that the treatment is fixed to t, little t, and then you're changing the mediator from m of 0, which is the value that the mediator naturally takes under control condition, to m of 1, which is the value of the mediator that naturally takes under the treatment condition. So interpretation is, it, this represents the causal effect of the change in m of y that would be induced by t. Right. While holding the t fixed at the little t, you're um, changing the mediator such that the change is induced by the treatment shift from 0 to 1. Right. So changing the mediator from m of 0 to m of 1 while holding the t at either t equals 0 or t equals 1. Right. So the, uh, the NIE, natural indirect effect, um, there are two, two possible uh, natural indirect effect, one is when you hold the treatment at, at zero, and the other one is when the treatment by, variable is set to one. 
clearly, if the treatment doesn't affect M, then M of zero is equal to M of one, so the natural indirect effect is also zero. Okay? So that makes sense in that if the mediate the treatment doesn't affect the mediate at all, then the mediation effect should be should also be zero. This represents the causal mechanism um, through the mediator, right? Because you're really looking at that red arrow, holding a T constant so that there is no black arrow, no direct effect, and then changing the mediator in a way that's induced by changing the treatment, right? So that, in a sense, that really is what the uh, causal mechanism uh, might represent in that framework I showed you as a DAG. More importantly, this allows for the decomposition of the treatment effect into direct and indirect effects, as, as I'm going to show you in the next slide. Whereas the control direct effect, there is no decomposition. You cannot really um, connect. It, it's difficult to connect that to the decomposition of the total effect. And the reason why is that the control direct effect is an interventional effect. You're intervening directly on the M. So it's a different intervention than the total effect, which is uh, changing the treatment alone and you know, without intervening on the mediator. So it's just a two different interventions. Whereas the natural indirect effect, we are thinking about how the mediator might change when you change the treatment. Okay, so let's look at the treatment effect decomposition. Okay, so in order to think about decomposition, we also need to define the natural direct effect. Okay, we defined the natural indirect effect on the previous slide, so here we're going to define the natural direct effect. And as you can see, the natural direct effect holds the mediator constant, m of t. So that's the value of the mediator that we realized under when the treatment equals little t. And then we change the treatment uh, from 0 to 1 because it's a direct effect. Okay. So it's a causal effect of t on y holding m constant at its potential value that would be realized when t equal little t. You're changing t from 0 to 1 while holding m constant at m of t. So this represents all mechanisms other than the one through mediator m. Given this definition, we can arrive at the effective decomposition. So the total effect can be written as natural indirect effect plus natural direct effect. Now it's a little interesting that uh, uh, natural indirect effect is evaluated at the little t, whereas the natural direct effect is evaluated to the, uh, the opposite uh, side of the treatment. Uh, you can also think of it as adding all t's of natural indirect effect and natural direct effect, and then taking the average, which is equal to the total effect.